Hey folks, you know one of the things that's always surprising is the amount of revisionist history that occurs on these TLPs. Like, did you hear the one about there being a guild on mischief, not named gig or treasures, that was doing a lot of open world in Kunark through Pop? Like, what? So I recently decided on Teak to conduct a little experiment and keep track of every open world kill. This is, after all, the true measure of which guild won the expansion. Some might claim it's who did the thinnest splits. Gret's Authority's small man, I guess. Lol. Others might claim it's who killed everything in DZ's first. So like the first six hours of an eight or twelve week expansion? That's like if you called the hundred meter dash at this point. Six hours on an eight week expansion is like the first four hundredths of a second in the hundred meter. Similarly, lol. So why is the only reasonable way to determine it by open world? Well, it's because it lets your guild get all the bosses on a daily basis that everyone else is waiting until their weekly disease are up to kill again. So if you're monopolizing that, it's like getting eight times as much loot. Well, a little bit less than that since a few of the mobs aren't on a daily spawn cycle, but at least let's say four or five times as much. It's really good. And especially if you're killing those when not being the Zerg guild of the server, so it gets spread around less ways. Right, so on to the statistics with a bit of commentary inserted so you guys get an idea of what was going on. This is for any future EverQuest historians that are wondering what happened. A couple notes here. First, I'm fairly sure these kills are accurate, with all times being based on Eastern US time zone. There's a few that happened right around midnight, a time of day which I'm basically never playing EverQuest, so there may be one or two that could technically have been on the other day around midnight, but I've made my best attempt to put them on the right day. And second, it's possible there was a zone crash or two, and the boss immediately respawned and got sniped, but otherwise this should be 100% accurate. So the opening night of Velius Antique was a bit of a mess. So, so much server lag. You can see me here attempting to jump in and tank AOW on launch night, but mostly ended up attacking the door. Whoops. Anyway, three guilds on Teak managed to get kills that night. These are the only three guilds who were active in open world during the expansion. Only five of the tier one mobs spawned on launch. Kha'Zix Thule needs to spawn again after launch to update its loot table, so it wasn't until day two that it was killed for the first time. And as you can see here, after that first night, the rest of the week was a clean sweep for Relentless Insomnia, taking every single other Tier 1 open world spawn and completing the expansion by having killed each of them at least once on that Monday when Vulak was up again. It's still not totally clear to me what the others were focused on. DZs would have been finished relatively quickly on launch weekend, so one would have thought there would have been a lot more competition, but that wouldn't come until later on. I guess there's other things they were focused on except getting the best loot for their members during that time. Who knows, really. Week 2 saw a bit more competition. Faceless Fury definitely stepped it up here. And why shouldn't they? It's probably the largest roster ever assembled for a TLP. I'm at least not aware of one that was an actively a raiding guild. That's not some multi-game or multi-server discord, I don't believe. Just the one for Teague. Jeez. Unfortunately for them, though, R.I. had entered the expansion with a huge collection of DPS alt wizards people had made, and they were really showing their stuff during this time and the next couple weeks. The funniest fight I attended on week two was this gem of a contested Avatar of War from August 26th, where he never even rendered on my screen. But R.I. got that one, I guess. So yeah, the servers weren't totally working as intended when there were these big clusters, but it improved a lot versus launch night. Is that our guys dying? No, it's there. No, them. Oh, them. Andrev is them. Dude, where is it? In the us. hallway, what do you mean? You ever use particle effects like maxed or something? They made it a skeleton. Oh, fun. No, oh, he's not. He's a giant fucking... I can't even target it. I, yeah, I don't even yeah, see I can't it. target it. I can't oh target it. 
it's, it's nuke. Not, it's it's like literally on extended in target right he's now. In a, he's an yeah, assist he's in the, he's right I'm here. in the hallway, guys. I'm in the hallway, fucking nuking the piss out of it. Like I'm yeah, I'm down the hallway, down, down the ramp. He's in the corner now. Yeah, at the bottom of the ramp, he's in the corner. Yeah, my just, target of target literally doesn't show you having a target. Yeah, yeah and it's just vicious. It's just vicious. Now it warped. Still nothing. Nothing, and dude. It's weird. It's glitched. Yeah, I don't see anything. Now. You have no target vision. Can you I, do that? Taunt, 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 that dust taunt. Just everybody that can taunt, fucking taunt. It's on it. Pootie. It's on Vengeance. Like, heal Pootie. Or heal Vengeance, rather. Like some warrior taunt, if you can. You guys are down below, right? right. Yeah, we're yeah, dude. I'm in the hallway no, right next to the arena. You got pushed down the hallway. Ready? Harm touch soon. Harm touch soon. And yeah, harm touch now. Everything. Yes. Hey, oh, good shit. Good shit. How the fuck? Week three was back to nearly complete relentless insomnia domination, with Faceless getting a lone avatar of war on the last day of the week. And that kill really marked the reemergence of Faceless into the open world raid scene. What had they been doing this whole time? Well, there was an experience bonus event over Labor Day weekend, and Faceless had used that time to push the meta. See, if the fights last two, three, four minutes, wizards are going to reign supreme. But what if they're even faster? Well, at that point, shadow knights are just better. Unholy aura life taps are just so consistently good for a short fight. They don't rely on getting messed up by AE damage. If there's some adds, they're just great. So Faceless had power leveled a bunch of shadow knights during that time, and it really paid off starting from week four where here you can see Faceless was a lot more competitive, getting 8 of the 30 Tier 1 mobs that spawned that week. They also managed to complete the expansion this week by getting Open World Yelenak and Kazakh Thule on the 26th day of the expansion and becoming the second guild to do so on Teak. Grats. And Faceless improved a lot from there with Week 5, even getting a narrow majority of the kills. That's 18 out of 34. So they're really on a roll at this point. I believe it was right around this time that the true dominance of those Shadow Knights in the meta became apparent, as Faceless was probably winning 8, maybe even 9 out of the 10 times where both guilds lined up a full 72 versus 72 DPS raid and let a rip. One interesting thing that happened during Velius on Teak was the whole Lanuga fiasco. Well, with all those Shadow Knights, Ivendir's hoops had really risen to prominence, as they're even better with that SK disc that doubles life tap damage than on other classes. So after every contested kill, it was back to Inethul to refill again. There was this really weird quote-unquote bug report that immediately led to Lanuga being perma-killed, and when she came back after the patch on the 18th, there were some pretty big problems with the fix, it generated both a plat dupe, as well as letting people generate a ton of these mallets. I had already written a pretty best new taunt button, but alas. So anyways, she got perma-killed again, but not before people had refilled the hoop coffers. Faceless did a much better job of restocking and putting hoops under their alt characters before this second perma-kill, and that helped them quite a bit for the rest of the expansion having that extra 1.8k damage output potential per character that had a hoop on them. And as you can see, this trend continued on into week 6, with Faceless nabbing 18 out of 28 spawns. The two main developments this week were the emergence of the passive sock, where we had a lot of people just kind of hanging out at the mob spawn locations, even with quite a lot of time left in their spawn windows. Second, it was at this point R.I. moved to being fully free-for-all on loot, meaning anyone can buy anything for any reason, as between the early weeks of open world and all the DZ splits, no items were really highly sought after except to sell or cheapskates refusing to spend their DKP for upgrades. I believe that was an attempt to encourage attendance, as it was definitely waning for R.I. at that point, but it didn't have a big effect, evidently, as R.I. seemed to struggle to fill out a 72-person DPS raid 
for much of that week. This was also a period of time with the most shenanigans, let's call them. Basically, every Kha'Zix Thule was deathballed. My personal favorite one was this time where Relentless Insomnia was happily killing CT, and suddenly the whole temple pops up on Xtar. You weren't even trying to be very sneaky there, were you, unfinished SK? running right through the middle of the picture like that. Anyone who frequents EQ Discord knows that this person sure is basically verbal diarrhea, but yeah, it was an accident, apparently. Right. Week 7 had much the same feel as Week 6, and Faceless also took a decent majority of the targets that week. RI had also decided to focus a bit on the next wave of DPS alts for Lucklin, and only selectively showed up for a few targets. You gotta show up to get the kills, but they had clearly set a different priority towards the end of the expansion. There was also a reduced lockouts event going on at this point, so Relentless had a lack of interest in trying to contest everything, given how much the loot would have only been sold, and not really for that much, this deep into the expansion, and on top of that how full the raiding schedule was otherwise. I definitely skipped some of those DZs myself due to fatigue, that late in the expansion, it's a bit much. And daybreak in the future, we want double loot, not reduced lockouts. Thank you. So I'm making this video after week 7 in order to get it out there before Lucklin hits. I know I said not to call the race over before it was actually over, but at this point it is just mathematically over. And drumroll please. The final totals through 7 weeks come out as Relentless Insomnia 142, Faceless Fury 70, Kano Shot Club 1. Even if Faceless were to get everything in this last week, they wouldn't get anywhere close to Relentless's totals since it's only about 30 to 35 spawns per week. Also, the spawns seem to have noticeably slowed down the past couple weeks. Anyone think that's somehow related to the overall server lag? Like it'll slow spawns if a zone gets a lot in it? Just at a macro level? I'll update the final totals, including week 8, in the video's description once we have them all in, just for completeness. So who y'all got for Lucklin? Anyone ready for the toxicity of mob reset mechanics in Lucklin? Let me know in the comments and if you'd be interested in seeing that for that expansion. And remember to hit the video with a like. Do all the tier 1 mobs even server-wide emote? I don't actually remember. Anyway, was a fun 8 weeks and good luck out there everyone.